Okay. I'm so excited to be with you on our social media brainstorming strategy chat. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I know you guys have questions. We have Sydney. Sydney, if you could just wave. Sydney's amazing. She has a social Hi. media company and a few of us have gotten a chance to work with her. She's incredible. She's on tonight to help us. I do have some things that I've learned. Um, as Sydney knew, I was already working with a different company that I have, I'm now done with. They were great. I'm done. I learned a ton. And I wanted to share some things that I've learned that relates to really our business. But Sydney's the expert, and she's going to kind of help us moving forward and answer questions. So I hope this makes sense. And, keep, and the one like thing I have to say is we are all different, meaning we may live in a different place, we have different personalities, we have different ages, we have different platforms that we are gonna to relate to people. So for some of us, social media might be a big part of what we do. For some of us, we may just be getting started. It does not matter. Wherever you're at, if you've not even been on social media yet, we're, imagine we're starting from here. So that's the first thing I wanna say. There are new national vice presidents, 20 years old and 70 years old, who had never been on social media and went to the top. So that's the first thing. This is not, this doesn't make or break your business. It's just a huge way to network. So I just wanted to like, that's my disclaimer. So let's just go. Can I here. add something onto what you're saying yes. real quick, Renee? Yep. Um, so yes, it's a great way to network. It's also a really good way to nurture leads. I really want to highlight that tonight. Like, yes, networking, but nurturing your leads is huge on social media because social media is benefit driven. And that's really what I want everybody to keep in mind going forward. And we're gonna we want to take it from likes to leads, right? Right. right. Like that's the thing. From here on out. Okay. So here, here's what I want to talk about regarding what I've learned um, from social media. So I want you guys to think about this. What in Sydney? I, there might be some things you disagree with, which is totally okay. So I'm gonna just throw it out. Then feel free to you know, address anything I say, and then we'll answer questions. So what's your brand? Um, our bond is not our brand. We are our brand. It is our lifestyle. Who are we? And what's our target market? You guys, we can't be everything to everyone. And yes, anyone can use our bond. Babies to baby boomers, men, women. But sometimes we have to kind of choose our niche so that we're real comfortable in our skin. So that's something I really figured out. Arbonne is not my brand. Renee Klein Healthy Living is. My lifestyle, what I represent, progress over perfection, you know, moving the needle, having a balance. Like I love the fact that we have flexibility. I love the fact that we have, can give people extra income. But think about like, you, you know, Tanya's vegan. I've always said to her like, that's a huge thing that I, when I think of you, you're a professor, you're vegan, you're awesome. Like, what are the things that you represent that other people like you are looking for? Because we're looking for people looking for us. You know, someone with a baby might be more likely to connect with Laura than they're gonna connect to me. And again, I know that there's like, you know, Natalie who will be watching this recording is in Scotland. She found me through a hashtag she now and I are talking to someone from London tomorrow who's in their 20s. That's random, kind of. That's not like the norm. I'm so excited about it, but that's not necessarily the norm. So, Sydney, again, you can disagree with me, but I just sometimes we try to like attract to ourselves. We just have to like focus kind of on our message and who, who we are. So, thinking about. No, you're totally right. Your brand is you because people don't buy from brands, they buy from people that they trust. So when you're, think about the brands that you're loyal to, you're loyal to what they stand for and the mission that they have and the purpose that they serve. So you're totally right. Okay. And that's what we'll do. I'll go through my things and then I'll ask you if you have any thoughts on it. Let's do it that way. And okay. the, other, the other thing is like, Arbonne's a word of mouth recommendation model. I get, I love to recommend. I get super excited about my new haircut or my new workout or where I went to eat. Just like, how much I love how I've been wearing a little bit more blush and it gives me a little bit more color, you know? So just remember we're a word of mouth recommendation model. So we have to make our recommendations clear consistently. Um, second thing, planning posts. The thing is, once you get into this game of social media, it is, it's, 
a big part, it, it takes time and thought. Like for example, I believe today, today is international thank you day or something like that. So I think someone on my team today for what I'm grateful for. And so you can actually Google national holidays. Like I think tomorrow is international gluten-free day. So you should probably post something gluten-free. And like, I've learned that the people I was working with, I'm like, oh, I could do that. Like I can know what the national holiday is and, and post something with that. So there's a whole list and I have the link I can send to you. But you have to plan your posts. I look at my week ahead. We have a Discover Arbon Tuesday night. I know I'm gonna be posting about that. That's gonna be a picture. I've already thought about what I wanna say about it ahead of time. Cause sometimes, sometimes things are just organic and in the moment, but sometimes you, at least for like the post, which is in your photo feed, I do three or four weeks. Stories always have to be going, but you kind of have to think ahead because you'd rather, I don't know, I could be wrong in a post, Sydney, but. I'd rather not post if it's not great than have a not good picture. Stories don't really matter that much. Is that correct, Sydney? No, that is 100% right. You don't, so you don't have to strategically plan every single post because like you said, sometimes organic, just like spur of the moment posts get more engagement than your planned posts because they're more personal. But um, you're totally right. I mean, there needs to be strategy behind your big picture but your organic posts sometimes perform better. Um, so for me, and I don't know, three to four a week. I mean, some people say every day. For me, I don't think I have enough to do one every day in my photo feed, but stories are always going. Do you have a feeling about how many times you have to post in your feed? So people kind of debate this. I like to recommend um, five to seven, three at the minimum. An easy way to kind of build a basic strategy behind this is to think about your categories for your content. So there should be like an about me because people want to get to know you, like you were talking about. You need to talk about your offers, your products, whatever. Um, think about the categories that you want to talk about with your audience. Think about the things that they're going to resonate with and map those out. And once you have those categories, then you can kind of, I mean, like actually draw them out, map them out and think about exactly the topics you want to talk about within each category each week and it makes it a lot easier so the way i do that is my core values i think about my five core values it's something i've heard work for a lot of people i respect my five core values are family and friends healthy food fitness and business so those are my five family friends food fitness business business meaning my team and, and let me say this, I had to get clear with myself. I'm on social media to add value and grow my team. That's it. Not to impress anybody, not to really make friends, um, but really to add value always. Like in every post, I try to add some value and grow my team. Those two things for me. And so, Sydney, can you comment on that at all? That's just what I've done, but I don't know what thoughts you have on that. Yeah, no, free value is kind of the biggest advantage of social media and you can provide value in every single post. So like, even if you're just posting about yourself, you can kind of think about things in your personal life that you want to post about and relate them to your business or to your products or to your offers or whatever so that they relate and you don't feel so random because some people think like, oh, well, I'm, this is my business account. I want to talk about my business. I want to provide value. Well, then relate your personal life to your value that you're offering. And some people get scared. And I was even afraid of how much free value I was providing in the beginning because I'm like, if I'm giving everyone my secrets, are they even going to hire me But or like buy from me at all? But that's actually the secret behind it. If you're telling everyone your secrets, then they're going to want to hire you because of the way that you're positioning yourself as an authority in your industry and the expertise that you're bringing behind your value. So I talk a lot about habits, you guys. And tonight my post was, I had a picture, Zach and I took Chewy on a walk yesterday. And my whole big thing, Sydney, so, for, so you know, something we do in our bond, we always, just for ourselves, write down five things we're grateful for, because we're very a gratitude, purpose-driven company, and that's kind of how we grow. So every single day, one of my five is I'm grateful for flexibility. I try not to always put the same thing, but that's always one of my five, because I really am so thankful for it. I mean, it's, and so 
that was my thing. I had a picture with me and Zach, and I'm so thankful for the flexibility that this business allows me. Um, and I, because I always talk about New Year's intentions, and I said one of my New Year's intentions was spending time with my family, and I'm so thankful for the flexibility. And then I said, how are you doing on your New Year's intentions? Because like always, just trying to help people think about what they're doing, always ending with a question and a call to action. Like here's, um, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'll get back to that part. But one thing that's real important, and I know you might not do this yet, and trust me, Laura, Holly, Seth, Tanya, they all know, I didn't, I've not been on social media that long, but now I do videos. I do little short videos, because people like that. Again, if you have something to say and give tips or ideas, or Tanya was just doing burpees on videos, I loved it. Um, if you're cooking, just whatever, they're in interested, but just on the go. Heather and I did a workplace wellness on Friday. I had to twist her arm, but she did it with me. We did a little video outside saying, we love that we're you know, getting to add value to the staff. But what we, the reason we did that was to show people, we do workplace wellness events so that they were interested. Her friend actually was like, oh, I, I love that you do that. You, you know, you look so, so the point is like little videos on the go consistently. Um, what are your thoughts on that, Sydney? And by the way, we have not practiced this. This is like totally. Yeah, um, this is on the whim. <laughs> um, like, yeah, off the cuff. Um, yeah, so video, I personally am petrified. Like even right now, I'm like sweating a little bit because I am not a public speaker naturally, but video has its own advantages because people get to know your personality through your textual content and your visual content. But when you show up on video, people get to hear like your tone of voice, like the way you use sarcasm and your humor and all those things. So even if you're doing your burpees or like just saying hi or like whatever you're doing, video provides such a different perspective um, to bring your value to. And um, that, I don't want to get ahead of you, but like your highlights are really big with this because if you just show up on video a little bit, the compound effect with your video on your stories is going to show up so big if you are saving them to your highlights on your profile. So we'll get to that. She's going to yeah. help us with that. Okay. So hope, <laughs> don't forget that Sydney. One thing in this, I got this actually from my husband who's in the media business, um, just Twitter and Instagram for himself. One thing he, he, he had a pet peeve. He's like, why are all you are on people writing so much on all your stories? You can't read it. Cause we've copied and pasted what other people have done. And I did it too. So I've started really simple messaging, simple. If stories go so fast, if we don't catch their attention, we've lost them. People don't wanna like hold the story. They don't really wanna do that. That's what he was thinking. I've been doing them real simple. Uh, Sydney, what are your thoughts on that? So it kind of depends on your audience, but simple is better because you're right. People are on the stories are kind of like quick. and. Speaking of holding it down, if you're showing up on video, it's still really good to provide textual content on there because just like the main point per slide, because a lot of times people are not even listening. They're just like hiding it in the bathroom or like, you know, whatever. They're just kind of sneaking in the carpool line or whatever. They may not be actually hearing it. So if they don't have anything to read, they're not going to get any value out of your story. They're just going to swipe and go to the next person. So even just put like the main point or just like an attention grabber, you don't even have to put the actual value, put an attention grabber so that they're like, oh, I need to come back and listen to this later. That's a great point. Cause you're right. I, now that I'm thinking about some people I follow, they do have stories on their, I mean, they have text on their video stories. Does everyone know mm -hmm. that? And if you don't know how to do this, we can help you. Um, okay, one other thing that I really, this is so out of my comfort zone, guys, but Tanya, what are the two reasons I'm on social media? Oh, to grow your team and to add value. So I have to be out of my comfort zone for a call to action. And I, and, and like, this is something my husband's helped me with and just some people I've worked with, they are pushing me. Why are people following us? And, and I'm not talking about our friends and family because they want more time or more money. Why would they join Arbonne? And yes, they might join for the products. Of course, of course, of course, of course. That, that kind of goes without saying. I'm kind of skimming over that we're showing what new products we have, what new recipes. 
I hope that's an understood thing. Of course we're sharing that. But if we're on this call, it's because you guys are committed to your business and we want to grow our team and help people the most. You can help them with more money and more time. So that's why they, people that don't know us aren't lit, doing it for like following us for the fun of it. They're curious about more money or more time. So just being a little bit more bold. Um, and, and so I think that's all I really have. I want to pass it on to Sydney for questions. I don't know if you want to comment on that at all, but the truth is, is like, we just have to get to the point. <laughs> yeah, I do. I want to add on to your point about calls to action. So every single post that you make needs to have a call to action, like every post on your feed. And, but it doesn't have to be intimidating. Like you can do 70% engagement, 30% direct sales, or you could do the opposite. Um, it doesn't have to be intimidating, but every single post needs to have a call to action because if you are not telling your audience what to do, they're not going to do anything. Can they're just not examples of that. Yeah. So engagement calls to actions could simply be like DM me if you have questions about this or like drop your favorite emoji. I did one the other day that was like the levels of awareness or the levels of readiness to work with me with my services. And I put each color emoji, each dot for, it was kind of like a red light type thing. And I put, you know, drop which level of emoji that you're at right now. So it can just be simple like that for engagement. For sales, if you have links for them to go to, or if you have an email list for them to sign up for, if you have a freebie that they can download, um, put the link in your bio and then direct them to that link um, in your call to action. How many hashtags should we have? What's your, what are your thoughts on that? So hashtags, kind of that game changes all the time. Um, right now, currently, ideally have three to five. I like to keep three to four. Um, it's just the way the algorithm is working right now. They don't like spammy content. So you can have up to 30 on your posts, in your captions. You can have up to 10 in your stories. And I'll tell you a little secret about that in a second. But in your captions, um, have three to five. Make them very niched down. So do not use ones that have millions. Like when you type in your hashtag and you can see how many posts each tag each hashtag has, stick with the ones that have between 10,000 and 500,000 because those are the ones that people are hanging out in. Hey, um, Sydney, what, what's the difference in captions and posts? <laughs> it's the same thing. It's a post with oh. a caption. The caption is, the post is the picture, the caption is what you write. But then you said mm -hmm. 30 on your post, but three to five on your captions. Wait, story. Yeah. Story. So your caption is within your post on your feed. So you know how like the caption part with all what, what you write about and you write might have some hashtags, then below it, you can have a bunch of hashtags. Uh, okay. Here's another thing. So Sydney, that's a perfect example. I've learned that. So I like work, um, work hard, play harder. That's one of my favorites. But if you do the emoji that has the bicep curl, it's like in the 15,000. If you do work hard, play harder, it's like millions. So I did one that had this because I'm, they're not going to find me in the work hard, play harder or something, whatever, to give you an example. So you can have your concept, but find the right number that, like she said. What was the number, what was the number that you said, Sydney? Focus on the ones with how many, um, between like hashtags? 10, yeah. yeah, between 10,000 and 500,000. Okay. I have a question, if I may. Um, so why not ones that have much fewer? if it's really niche and if you because you might get more engagement from those people or does it just mean that people don't really look at those hashtags much so if you use ones that have you know around like five thousand or whatever you're right they would have a really specific audience that are probably engaging with it because they're using that really specific hashtag so the only problem is when you have such a limited space for hashtags and it's such a limited like allowance within the algorithm at this time um it's really important to use the ones that more people are engaging with you can totally use the ones that have 5,000 or 500 even 
Um, and that brings me to my next point. It's important to not seem spammy to the algorithm. And what I mean by that is don't use the same set of hashtags every single day. Use them at least every other day. So if you're using them every day, the algorithm is going to think you're spam, you're a bot, you're just trying to get this fake engagement, you're just trying to get followers, you're not trying to convert them, you're not really on here for the right reasons. So that would be a good time to bring in your more niche down hashtags. So every other day or on specific posts, use the really specific ones. Can I ask you a question, Sydney? So um, I have, I get a lot of new likes and followers in different Instagram and Facebook. And what I started doing, tell me your thoughts on this. I'm, I'm nervous. So you might think it's terrible. So feel free to um, tell me, but I'm just sending them a message you know, hi, Laura, thank you for liking my healthy lifestyle page. What area of health slash business are you most interested in learning about? I really want the content to reflect what you're interested in learning more about. Thanks so much. So I'm not asking them to buy anything, to do anything, but I am asking what they're interested in. And then if I post something that they said specifically, I'll tag them just to show I care, which I do, but I don't, I can't stand when I like someone and then they send me a message of, want to learn more about Arbon. I think that's annoying, but am I wrong? I don't know. No, you are more right than you are wrong. So you're not wrong. I want to help you do that in a better way. So I used to do the same thing. A lot of people do the same thing. They're like, let me give you more value on my page and what you want to see. That's a great way to go about thanking new followers. Mm -hmm. Um, if you want to go about it in a more personal way, do it in an audio message. So if you have the time or the moment. Yeah. yeah. I love those. Okay. Um, reword the first sentence. I forget exactly what you said, but instead of saying, what are you interested in, in this market, basically that you're in right now, ask them like what their life is like. So like kind of, so, okay. So a little secret that I learned, actually my boyfriend taught me this cause he's like a total <laughs> natural salesman. So when people ask you, you know, when you say you're in sales, they're like, okay, sell me this pin then the secret to that, you don't talk about the pin. You ask them what they're in the market for and how long they've been in the market for that. So don't talk about your industry and what you're offering. Ask them what they're doing right now and what they're struggling with, what they're looking for. Only talk about them in the first like three to five messages at least. Oh. Very good. Just make the DMs all about them. Okay. Can you get, well, maybe we could talk about exactly what you would say. So a lot of times, like if people follow me, I'll get on an audio message. First, I'll review their profile. I'll look at a story if they have one on there right now. I'll look at their highlights, see what their life is about. I'll look at their posts, read some of their captions. And then I'll get on an audio message. They're each a minute long. So you do have to watch yourself because it will cut you off and then you don't know where you ended. That happens to me all the time. Um, so, but you can send more than one, um, but just kind of thank them for the follow, mention something really, really specific and personal about a recent post or their current story so that they know that you were actually interested in their profile. You don't have to follow them. That's not going to affect it. If you want to follow them, that's great. Um, if you do follow them, mention it. Um, and so in the first message, don't ask them a question. Just talk about them. If they respond, then you can be like, oh, how did you get into that? Or, you know, what sparked your interest in this? Or why are you struggling with this? And then you can kind of like navigate a way to start the pathway to start talking about your offers. But don't talk about your offers until you're actually engaging in a full conversation with them. And you can do audio message on uh, Facebook Messenger as well. So you would do it mm -hmm. the same that way too? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, guys. She, we have 30 minutes with Sydney. To I, have a, I have a dumb question. Where do, you, where do you find all these hashtags? I'm so, so dumb when it comes to this stuff. That is not a dumb question. Hashtags are 
everyone's enemy. They are my enemy and I live in social media. Um, so when you're typing out a caption and you do the hashtag symbol, if you just type in one letter, a bunch of hashtags are going to come up. So before you approach the hashtag scenario, then just kind of have in mind what you want them to be about. Like think about your caption, what you're talking about, think about keywords, and then have in mind what you want them to be. So if you're talking about like the fizz sticks, maybe you want to have a hashtag, something about like energy or like mental awareness or something, something really specific that people are going to be looking for help for. And so they're going to be typing in the keyword, like, I don't know, like energy help or something. And when they look in that hashtag, they're going to see your post and your caption is going to be talking about how those physics will help them with that problem. So tomorrow, Holly, National Gluten Free Day, if that's right, I could be wrong, I think it is. Like with recipes, I'll do dairy-free, gluten-free because there are people looking for that. Dairy-free, gluten-free recipes. So that's my hashtag. And that is not as common as you would think. Hashtag dairy-free, gluten-free recipes or soup recipes or whatever. Because whatever you're talking about, it's like the, whatever you're talking about can be, a, can be a hashtag. Okay. Yeah, you can make anything a hashtag. Okay. Thank you. Cavalier. Cavalier mama. You know, Cavalier yeah. something, like whatever it's about is a hashtag. Okay. One thing that I do is I, again, like with the whole wanting to add value thing, I have different themes every month. I've done, you know, overcoming perfectionism, setting good habits. I've done Facebook lives with people, different things. You guys don't have to do that, but as you start having clients and people watching you, they're going to work with you. Not, I mean, our products are great, but they're going to work with you because they know that you know what to do with them and you know how to help them and they trust you. So really thinking about every month, like what are some things that I can really help people with and, and doing some, just going live, just talking. And once you get used to it, it's really not that big of a deal. It's really scary at first, I know, but then it becomes a lot easier. So just thinking about, you know, I always talk to Laura about this and maybe if we have time, we should go around the call. I'd love to know, for, let's just do that real quick. I think we can help each other. This is good. Um, what is our brand? Like, who do we think we relate to? Who, like, we're looking for people looking for us. So I'm going to start with Stephanie. Steph, we've talked about this a little bit. Who do you think is your audience that you're really wanting to attract? Because when you start knowing where you're going, um, you'll come up with things that make sense more sense yeah and um sydney helped me with this too when we had our little thing i was my hashtags better with age um and kind of going for empty nesters or about to be empty nesters um kids are expensive college like what i'm bored what do i do now you know kind of thing so people that are that can relate to stephanie she's <clears throat> beautiful and fun and busy like they're going to be attracted to that holly who do you think you're looking for? Um, well, retirees, um, dog moms. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I don't know if, if people in the um, therapy area would, if that might be too small of an area, really. Listen, we only need a few key people to have, you know, a six figure Arbon business because. True. People know people, remember? Yeah. We're not looking for a ton of people. I think sometimes that's our problem. A few key people can change our business. Right. So right. We can talk more so about a, that. A thought for you, mom, would be like um, adult children, um, mm -hmm. grandparents, grandmothers, um, like maybe grandmothers that keep their grandkids. Mm -hmm. If you can like narrow that down a little bit, they want something for their, themselves. Um, Okay, thank you. Catherine, what about you? 
I'll take a Cindy and a friend. No, um, <laughs> yeah. I, think, I, I feel like right now I'm sort of on the cusp of like a lot of my friends are going to have, you know, they've been in the thick of young kids that will soon be all in elementary school where they're going to find themselves with a lot more time looking for you know, purpose. Um, so I'm kind of trying to plug into that niche, like showing them how you can work it around your kids whether they have, you know, really young kids or, you know, now your kids are in elementary school, you can really kind of turn this, like most of my friends do like to be healthy, like turn that into an income and something you can build for your family. Love it. Um, Heather, what about you? Sorry, I have a addition to the call. <laughs> she wanted to hear. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's the same, like stay at home moms. I mean, um, our nutrition is kosher and I'm Jewish. So that's, um, a market as well that I was, um, looking to get into as well. So, um, mainly those. I love it. And it's picking a couple, like your client profile, your buyer profile, really thinking about that. That's I narrowed it down and it's been really helpful. Tanya, I mean, I kind of already said some of yours, but I would like to know from you what you think. <laughs> Well, you know, I really struggle with that. I really struggle to figure that out because I I don't feel like I'm the typical, but then, I, you know, nobody is typical, but um, because so much of my identity is kind of blocked from who I can talk to, right. but then social media would allow me to reach those people. So, you know, I'm a professor, I'm a criminologist, so criminology is a huge part, um, like re-entry, criminal justice. I'm vegan, I have dreadlocks, love music, I love to work out, but I'm still, like, that is one of the biggest things that I, I feel like I'm, I'm spreading myself too thin in markets that will not respond to me. And you know, I, I'm like, I, I think I would, I think I want to attract my students because I see that they could benefit from it, but then I somehow have to look in the mirror and realize that, I'm 45 years old. They think I'm an old fart and I'm about to die. They're not interested in hearing from me. So, you know, I would love like a business builder who's their age who can then reach out to them. Yeah, I, that's that's my biggest. Sydney, what are your what thoughts? What do I do here? Okay, I have a couple thoughts. So, <laughs> um, for anyone who is afraid to niche down, do not be afraid. We're all afraid of the beginning. I'm honestly still a little bit afraid of niching down just because I'm still kind of navigating as I solidify my services so I can totally relate. But the smaller that you niche down, the better it's going to be in the long run for your business and for your sales because the more directly that you speak to people, the more they're going to re resonate with it. So if you're reading a caption about something and you're just like, ah, whatever, you're not going to buy from that person. But if you're reading a caption, social media speaking, if you're reading a caption and you're like, oh my God, she's, she's literally talking to me, then you're going to want to buy from that person. And that only comes with niching down and thinking about exactly. So like, I mean, you can get as specific as like age, name, how many kids they have, what they wear on a daily basis. Like, do they wear active wear? Like, what do they eat for dinner? You can get so specific. And the more specific that you get, the more your ideal audience is going to resonate with you. And that's actually going to help you too, because then you're not going to be working with or having customers as people that you don't really like to talk to, you know, because everyone knows there are some customers that just kind of like grind your gears and they're just kind of hard to serve. So the smaller that you niche down, the easier it's going to be for you to work and the more customers you're going to find. So are you saying like maybe she wants, to, in, in, she thinks she should want her students, but maybe she really doesn't. Yeah. And like she said, if, if she thinks they're going to benefit from it, that's great. But think about who you want to serve and think about the way that you can serve them. And you're only going to be able to effectively serve anyone if you know what they need and you know how to serve them in a way that gives them what they need, but in a way that they want. Because no one's going to buy stuff that they need with their spare money. No one wants to spend money on stuff that they need. That's why we ask for like socks for Christmas when we're adults. <laughs> so like, 
when you're spending your money on social media, especially because it's benefit driven, it's not like need driven. It's not Google. You're not like searching for things that you need on Amazon. Um, social media is about gifts and treating yourself. It's about benefits. So think about what they need, but serve them in a way that they want. So try to attract them. Don't talk about things that you want to talk about. Don't talk about it in a way that you want to talk about. Think about things your ideal audience wants to hear about. Research what they're talking about. Follow, look up people that are your ideal client. Look at the language they're using and then use that on your page. If they're not even speaking like you do, that doesn't matter. Change your language. Like still be yourself. Don't like be fake, but use their language because that's what they're going to resonate with. Hey, can I ask you one question? Um, I know, so, so let's say my, um, my whole brand is like this, these, this older, whatever, what, but I don't know, social media, are they really on it? Like I'm doing all this stuff. Sometimes I send them like, um, messages and I'm like, do they even even know how to get on that? You know? Yeah. Your audience actually might be more on Facebook than Instagram. Are you on Facebook too? I am, but I don't get as much activity. Like, and I get a lot of Madison's friends following me and watching me you know, you know, she's a senior in college. I get that, but yeah, I know it's weird. Yeah. I think your audience is more on Facebook and they're a little bit harder to convert through social media because they don't trust it as much mm -hmm. naturally because they didn't grow up with it. Mm -hmm. So, um, but that actually kind of gives you a little bit of an advantage because you don't have to be so like entertainment and like la di da with it. You can just give them the facts this is the value that you provide on the platform that they're on, which is probably Facebook and still use their language. So, you know, serve them what they need in a way that they want, but you don't have to like sugarcoat it. You're like, this is what you need. This is how you can get it. I think or, a lot, I think a lot of people have gotten scared off from Facebook too. I know. I mean, I'm kind of getting scared off from it, quite frankly. Yeah, Facebook is getting really, really touch and go here lately. Laura, how about you? What's your brand or who, who do you think you're, who are you talking to? Sure. Um, definitely new moms, young moms. What else did I write down? Stay at home moms. I mean, I'm not a stay at home mom, but any, you know, like. Maybe working but, moms that want to be home. Right. Yeah. I was going to say um, those looking for, you know, an asset income that want to be at home with their kids. Your um, recent post was so good. So, so great. Um, so yeah, like, cause that's what I want. So, you know. Um, Veronica, amazing. how about you? Veronica is just getting started with us. So I, know that I wanted <laughs> yeah. you to come on cause I know that, you know, we all have our own personality on social, but who do you think you want to be focusing on and would be, would resonate with you? I would think that I, um, I can easily approach younger adults, like younger females, like college age or just starting out in their careers with like, um, I don't know, like by, I've noticed that by me trying stuff out and just talking about it, they've been excited about it or they've been the most excited about it. Like my stepdaughters and all her age group of friends. So I would think, because I love it too, I would reach out to people my age group too. So, you know, working moms or just people who have kind of like done the norm or traditional regular secret deodorant their whole life and never even thought about doing something and thinking about what's in it. So I think just educating people that are more like me that have just always done the norm and didn't even know that stuff like this existed. Has this been helpful just in thinking about when you post something, you know, thinking about who, what am I trying to do here? Is that yeah, yeah. Cause I, I, I wrote like four pages of notes. So it's been amazing. Good, good. <laughs> I think about when, when something comes on someone's phone, what's my message? What are they getting from it? Like what, what, because, I'm not doing it for my own health, I promise. <laughs> um, so I always think about that, like what's coming in on their phone? When is it coming in? I always share, and Sydney, you can tell me if I'm wrong. This has seemed to work 
but I could maybe do better. I always share Sunday, Sunday night about healthy living, wanting extra time, wanting extra money. On Sundays, people have probably overindulged. They might not go, want to go to work Monday. That's who I'm talking to. I want to give people choices, but on a Friday, they're not thinking about being healthy and they might get annoyed even if I'm like, hey, here are my carrots, you know? So it's like, have fun on Friday, but on Sunday, let's talk. Do you want to go to work? I mean, I'm not exactly like that, but that's how I'm thinking. Just really thinking about when it's coming in. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, that's perfect. Um, that goes back to whoever your ideal audience is. And if you have a business account on Instagram, um, I know some of you probably still use it as a personal account and that's fine. But the advantages of, of converting it to a business account is you can see your insights and the activity with your followers. Um, and you can literally see the days and the time of day that they're the most active. And you're right. I mean, I'm sure your audience is most, you know, you're most appealing to them on Sundays because they don't want to start the week the way that they've been starting the week the last like 30 weeks, you know? So it depends on your audience, but that's an advantage of using a business account. You can actually track your analytics. I know for me, eight o'clock at night seems to be great. That, and it's weird subconsciously. I mean, whenever I've tried to do other times, unless it's like after a morning workout, which I wouldn't post as a, a in my feed, it's a story anyway. But any post I do, unless it's really a morning thing, is always at night. And that, that just grows. And is it true too, Sydney, your next post it, with the algorithm is affected by how well the one before it did. So you want to make sure, sure that the last one was good so the next one gets a better viewing. Is that, how does that work? Can you explain that better to everybody? Yeah, so there's a few factors that go into that. You're right. Your last post is going to affect your next one, but it's also the hashtags you used on your last one. It's also like the last like five or 10 posts that you posted. Instagram doesn't necessarily read every post and dictate how you perform, but it tracks the engagement on the types of posts. So like it kind of reads like if you had an engagement post that did really, really well on Wednesday, and then you had a salesy post that did really, really bad on Thursday, and you did another salesy post on Saturday, the one from Thursday is going to determine how well the one on Saturday does. So it's kind of wonky, but you're right. The, one, the previous ones that you do determine how your future ones do. So that's why being consistent is so important, because if you have that consistency and you're posting at least three times a week, hopefully five to seven, then even if you have a sucky post, three posts from now, you're going to be fine. Can I you have a question? Oh, go ahead. I, I, have, I actually have two questions. So you say five to seven times. So what's the effect of posting more? Because some people post three or four times a day, right? Yeah. So Posting more than once a day should only happen at this point in time if you have so much content. Like, um, if you're familiar with Gary Vaynerchuk, he or posts Gary v. all the time. So does yes. my husband. There's a lot of his opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Gary V has so much content and so much value that, like, I don't think any of us could get annoyed because every time he posts, there's so much value. But not a lot of us are that solidified in our market that we can do that and that's okay and right now on social media it's okay if you're not posting five to seven times a week if you're showing up on stories the way that instagram is performing right now at this moment your feed is still very important so posting three to seven times a week is important if you're posting seven times your stories are not going to be as important, but they're still going to be as effective. If you're posting three times a week, you have got to be showing up on stories because your audience probably doesn't really know who you are. Because if you're not showing up on stories and you're posting like three or four times a week, when you're, when you're showing up, they're like, okay, who is this? Because they're probably not engaging with you as much. So, but how do you do hashtags on stories? Okay, you're a good reminder. I wanted to come back to that. So you can do up to 10 hashtags on each story slide. So 
you can hide them. A lot of people don't like them. I personally don't really like them on stories. I think they look tacky on my brand. Some brands can pimp them out. I don't like them on mine, but you can hide them. You can put them like behind a little picture, like a little sticker. Um, you can like, it's like how you tag people. It's like how you tag people, right? Like, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So if you do the sticker and there's like location, hashtag question. Yeah, exactly. It's the same thing. So you can do the hashtags, you can pinch them, you can hide them behind a, a sticker, you can do up to 10. And the less oh, text that you have on a story, the more likely it's going to appear on the explore page. So you're only going to get on the explore page most likely if you have hashtags on your story, but the algorithm only really shows the ones that have less text because no one wants to see it like a paragraph on their explore page. Um, wait, you said something about, so let's say I just do, I don't post that, post that much on my feed, but I do a lot of stories. Is that the same? Is, is that the same if you don't have a lot of people looking at that? It Instagram, I don't know. Is it the same thing that you were saying? Um, right now, like I said, it's kind of changing a little bit. Everyone is still looking at your feed. Everyone's scrolling, but it's not in chronological order. So it's based on your engagement. So if people are engaging with your content, you're gonna show up on their feed. But, and it's the same thing for your story, but you're most likely um, to show up on their stories because they're clicking through or they're swiping through. Like always, it gives me anxiety. I know we both don't like video. Well, it's like the more you know, the more I realize I don't know. Like I feel like I'm <laughs> consistent and engaging, and now I'm like, I don't let know. me speak to my perfectionist. <laughs> my um, only good things. Just keep trying something new. We don't need to know everything. Try something new every day. I'm really not letting myself get overwhelmed. There continues to be. I just started letting my YouTube, some of the videos we've done, not the team's ones, but the Discover Arbonne's, instead of saying Discover Arbonne 2020, what is Arbonne? That's what someone's searching on YouTube. There's untapped, you know, it's untapped on YouTube, but it needs to be public. Like there's so, like there's, there's so many things So don't get overwhelmed, just start doing more. So, so I have another quick question. The, you talked about the business account. How do you get a business account in Instagram? Um, so you go to your profile and you see the three little lines at the top right, I think. Um, and you go to your settings. And I don't know the exact wording. I can look. But you, you would literally just switch it to a business. It's super easy. And it walks you through the steps. I think it literally says switch to business account. So do you have to pay for that? or is No. It Oh, okay. It's free. Um, don't do a creator account. I think it's called creator or something. It's a new thing. It's for like influencers. It will not be effective. It's kind of dumb. I don't know why they added it. Um, Sydney, how I see sometimes people will reintroduce themselves. Like, hey, haven't said hello in a while. This is who I am and what I do. <laughs> How often do you recommend that? It feels so silly, but it's true if you have new people calling you and they don't know what you do. Yeah, so that kind of goes back into your categories. Um, if you are rotating your categories and your about me comes up once a week, the wave that you're rotating it, that's when you do it. If you're noticing a huge increase in followers, you should do it. Or you could do it every couple of weeks. It kind of depends on how fast your followers are growing. And it also depends on how often you're rotating your categories. But I would say at least every two weeks. How many people, I know they, there's, you want, like if I have 1,200 followers, I'm not following more than 600. You want the rate, what's the ratio that you'd like? There's no real mathematical way that Instagram prefers it right now. Um, but if you follow more than 2,000 people, you look like a spam account to Instagram um, and to other people. So like when people, I've been hired to clean out people's followers. Mm -hmm. And I delete people automatically who follow more than 2,000 people. It's to Instagram, it's mostly if you follow more than four or 5,000, 
but you're less likely to show up on anybody's feed if you follow more than 2,000. Okay, and this, this question, next question pertains to our business. I'm curious your thoughts. I used to think, and we network and we grow leads, like you said. I used to think, now, if someone's following me, I love what you recommended, looking at them, looking at their profile, asking a lot of questions, but just commenting on people's stuff just to get their attention if it's not authentic, I, I stopped doing that. Like, I don't really spend a ton of time doing that, except for people that I'm really, really interested in starting like a relationship with, and that's through private messaging. Um, how are we efficient? Because I know everyone on this call wants to grow their team and be efficient and add value. What are your thoughts on that, if that make, question makes sense? Yeah, I mean, nurturing your leads is one of the most important things you can do on Instagram and Facebook. Um, it's one of the advantages that we have with social media is lead nurturing really easily. But if you're not doing it genuinely, then just don't do it. Like you said, if you're posting and it's not a great post, you might as well just not do it. Same with comments. Like if you're leaving one or two word comments, it's not really going to do anything because Instagram is going to look at it as you're either a bot or just kind of like this fake engagement tool. And the person you're leaving that comment for is not really going to resonate with it at all because you left like two words. Like they're not going to, it's not going to pop out to them. So if you're engaging with followers or potential followers, your ideal clients or whatever, make sure to leave at least four words because that usually forms a sentence that usually forms a connection. Um, maybe add some emojis if it goes with your brand mm -hmm. and make sure that whatever you're saying either provides a little bit of value or you're engaging with them. So maybe ask a question or you're offering them a little bit of advice. Guys, we have time for a couple more questions. Then I would love for Sydney to just share like her business and how she works um, in case you're going to work with her more directly. No pressure, of course. She's been amazing to our team. But I do, of course, want to give her that opportunity to share about herself. So like one or two more things and then I'll let her share. Um, you know, I was just going to ask like, the quickest way. Like I feel like I get, you know, decent involvement from like my friends who are like my followers right now. Like how do I expand to like reach new people? Like right now I'm kind of in my little bubble on Instagram, which is fine because I haven't really known what I'm doing. But I know I need to add hashtags. Like I guess how do I get more followers? I have way more on Facebook, but. Yeah, so that goes back into your engagement. I mean, if you add hashtags, that'll be great because then people can find you if they're interacting with the hashtags. Again, make sure that you're interacting with the hashtags that you're using before you post, maybe like 30 minutes before you post. If you know the hashtags you're going to use, go into those hashtags, interact with posts that are using them. And then 30 minutes after you post, go back into those same hashtags just so that it gives your post a more, um, more of a chance of showing up on the explore page and people to find you. And then when people visit your page, they're like, oh, she's into this too. And they're more likely to engage with you. Another way I've is for like search to hashtag or a person on Instagram. Like I don't even know how to find anything. <laughs> yeah. So I need to start just, like looking into hashtags. Yeah. It's mostly if people are looking for specific things, they're searching a keyword. So if they're looking for like health coach, and you use hashtag health coach, they're going to see you. Um, you can also teach your followers how to engage with you. So even if you don't follow them, go into your followers and they know they follow you. They followed you for a reason. So teach them how to interact with you. They're more likely to convert into customers and clients or to work with you if they know that they're welcome to talk with you. So you can comment on their posts, you can DM them, you can respond to their stories or whatever, and just kind of teach them how to speak with you. I want to share one thing before I forget, something I just learned that I'm starting to do. When you do an Arbonne event or something lifestyle brand, think about it in three parts. On the way there, so excited for whatever and why. Like, we're talking to our pre-team. Everything we do is talking to our future team member. Then you might later have a picture at the event or a little video from it and then reflecting on it after with a call to action. Any thoughts on that, but like a three part before, during and after around something that's worthwhile of highlighting. Talk, because we're talking to our future team, 
in engaging them. And he said, Nia, that was the advice I was given. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I like to kind of use one part of that. I like to just talk to people like we're already working together. Um, I do that in emails, in social media, because then it kind of gives them the invitation to think along those same lines. If you're talking with them, like you're already excited to work with them, then they're more likely to hop on board. Give us an example of that. Give me the link. So, so if I'm emailing with someone and I maybe sent them a proposal or an invoice or something, um, we had a consult on the phone, they're maybe thinking about it a little bit, and then I send them an email with the proposal, and I'm like, I can't wait to work with you. They have not committed yet, but I tell them, I cannot wait to get started with you. I cannot wait to get to know your brand. Like, let's get started this week. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, okay, well, that's really cool. I can't wait either. So we have to say, I can't wait to do a healthy happy hour together. <laughs> It's going to be so fun. <laughs> one more question then, Sydney, I'd love for you to share. Anything else? Laura, did you have one? Or are you good? My question was literally going to be like, what is your business, Sydney? Like, okay. how, can we connect, how can we connect with you on Instagram? <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> um, yeah, so my, <laughs> um, I really appreciate the opportunity. Um, so my business, I am a content creator for social media. Um, I help a little bit a little bit with blogs, but I create content for stories and posts. So the captions, I help with hashtag optimization, profile optimization or creation. If you're not at that step yet, um, I have a menu of the skeleton of my services on my website, but they're all customizable. So my mission is to basically help anyone where they're at in their business and get them where they need to be through social media. And I like to focus on goals that are outside social media. So if your goals are to grow your business, that's what we're gonna do. And social media is just gonna be the vehicle that we use to get there. What's your website? My website is tailored.media, T-A-Y-L-O-R-D.media. And you guys should follow her. What are, remind us what you are on Instagram. My Instagram is tailoredmedia.llc. Sydney, do you have any final thoughts for us as we close? <laughs> um, I don't think I have final thoughts. I think we talked about everything, but I do have an entire presentation with everything we talked about and a couple extras that I want to email to everyone. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, thank you. This is so helpful. Thank you. thank you to Catherine for introducing us to Sydney. Yeah. <laughs> thank this you, Catherine. Amazing. Thank oh, you so much. Well, Sydney and I had a lot of bonding time in the cul-de-sac, and I miss her. <laughs> <laughs> I know I miss it. It was so much fun. Well, guys, thank you so much. And there were some things that she mentioned that um, you can follow up with her on. If I can help in any way, always here. And we're all just like doing learning and growing and trying things and you know, nothing, nothing bad comes from just trying some new things and having fun with it. So, um, thanks you guys for your time. I'll send out this recording and Sydney, we loved having you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.